He had a great career. It's true. It's damn true. I'm Chris Wall with a wrestling vlogger who always tells it like it is. Hey, I had a pretty good fast lane, right? Every main event, main card one I got right, including Ronda Rousey lo interfering with Becky Lynch. Too bad the pay-per-view was subpar. But anyway, so it's finally over and done with. Kurt Angle, the first ever Olympic gold medalist to join the WWE, is finally hanging up his boots and signet and joining the pantheon of WWE legends who work more or less behind the scenes than in front of the camera. His last match will be at WrestleMania, though at the current time we know not who his final opponent will be. After that, we won't see him too often, so a retrospective as of his career may not be amiss. Now, as we all know, the Pittsburgh native went into Atlanta in 1996 and with a broken frickin' neck, won five straight matches to win the gold medal in heavyweight freeway wrestling. Now, not too soon after, he attended his first pro wrestling event. Unfortunately, it was an ECW event. And he was horrified at the bloody mess and even threatened a lawsuit against Paul Heyman if he was shown on TV there. And pro wrestling was not Angle's cup of tea until he watched an episode of Raw. He signed up with the WWE and he quickly moved from one developmental territory to another until 1999 when he finally made it onto WWE TV. He showed up at Survivor Series 1999 with his now famous three eyes of intensity, integrity, and intelligence. He was a self-professed role model for the WWE Universe, kind of like Daniel Bryan nowadays, and was a wonderful heel. He became the first man to hold both the Intercontinental and European Championships at the same time, until he lost both at WrestleMania 2000, which was all right, because later that year, he won the WWE Championship from The Rock for the first time. Angle, The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin were, in my opinion, the holy trinity of superstars as the 21st century turned. Angle settled into his status of main eventer quite well, winning various other titles, including the WWE title another three times, and the WCW slash World Heavyweight Championship twice. And during the WCW ECW invasion angle, acted a bit of a buffoon while the WWE fought for its existence. The sight of him wearing a small cowboy hat and singing while strumming a ukulele has yet to be unseen in my mind. Ugh. The turning point of Angle's career, I, I think, took place when he was a draft pick for the new ECW brand of WWE in 2006. Rebranded as the Wrestling Machine, Angle would run through opponents with skill instead of the brutality usually associated with ECW. It didn't last. He was offered his release three months later, stating that he was fighting hurt and needed time off. And many people, myself included, thought he might be retiring from the ring as a whole. But for being hurt, Angle didn't take too much time off. He showed up on a He showed up on TNA that October, a month after he left WWE. Now, I have to admit that this cheesed me off at the time because again, I thought he left the WWE to retire from the business. And then he shows up on the WWE's biggest rival after just a month off? Less for me, I said. But now that I didn't, not that I didn't understand him wanting to leave, I mean, after all, he went from kicking tail in USA and TNN to slumming it on sci fi. Raw was the A show, SmackDown the B show, but ECW was more like the H show, the way it was promoted. 
I mean, if I got demoted that quickly in the business, I'd want to go someplace that recognizes talent too. And talent he showed in spades in the t- in TNA. He became the first person to hold all three men's titles, World, Division X, and Tag Team, at the same time. More things change, huh? He would then get uh, to be an authority figure in the company and kept TNA rolling for 10 years. It wasn't enough to stop the WWE juggernaut, but people kept tuning in to see him interacting with both past and future WWE superstars. Of course, all good things, if you want to call it that, come to an end. And with TNA trying desperately to even find an identity, it was obvious that the shine had come off of the Upstart Federation. So Angle left TNA and went on to the indie circuit for a few years until Mr. McMahon called him up and asked him to return. The incentive? To be included in the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2017. Everyone was so happy to see Kurt Angle back in the WWE. Of course, no one could have guessed that two days after his induction, he would be re- he would be named GM of Raw while Stephanie McMahon was on the mend. To hear 15,000 people chanting, You suck! During his entrance music and Kurt egging them on? It was like he never left. And now, after several more times in the squared circle, including a WrestleMania mixed tag match, where he and Ronda Rousey beat up the Helmsleys last year, he says he's truly hanging them up after April 7th. And I doubt this will be like when Rowdy Roddy Piper retired after WrestleMania 3. Angle turned 50 last autumn, and while it doesn't look like he's missed too many beats, He's still getting on in years. His career in the WWE may have been relatively brief, but he packed a lot into that time. Here's hoping Kurt Angle enjoys his retirement and has a great life outside of the ring. That is, unless he shows up on Chris Jericho's Fed in a month, in which case he truly does suck. I'm Chris Wolver, the wrestling blogger who always tells it like it is. See ya.